everyone, I'm Larissa Russell of Creative You, and I'm your host of the Creative Soul Healing Podcast. Here's where we talk about the connection between creativity and healing by interviewing amazing creatives, spectacular healers, and inspiring people who have used creativity in their healing. What does it mean to be creative? What is creativity? You don't have to write a best-selling book or paint a masterpiece or even play in a rock band. Creativity is in everything that we do, in the ways we think, in the way we run a business, in our everyday lives, we are creative all the time. Let's talk about how we are creative and how creativity helps us heal mentally, physically, and emotionally, right now on the Creative Soul Healing Podcast. Hi everyone, Larissa Russell of Creative You Healing, and welcome to the Creative Soul Healing Podcast. Today, I have with me Elizabeth A. Sanchez. Elizabeth was part of our second annual Loving Healing Creating Summit we ran in February and shared with us the seven pillars of wisdom. You can still get access to the summit at www.creativeyouhealing.com. Elizabeth's true passion is health and wellness through connecting the power of body, mind, and soul. For over 25 years, she's enjoyed seeing life transformations with individuals seeking inner peace, confidence, health, and wellness. Elizabeth helps individuals identify the best tools and techniques to unlock the life they most desire. She offers her clients and audience the tools to implement into everyday lives to attract great experiences, build strong, healthy relationships, find more joy, health, and happiness with a renewed passion for life by shifting the focus on desires rather than on what they don't want. As a holistic life coach, energy practitioner, and business consultant, Some of the core foundations she incorporates into a session are a combination of life and success strategies, essential oils, crystals, meditation, Reiki, spiritual guidance, and energy medicine, bringing balance to the body, mind, and soul. So welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Larissa. I'm I'm glad to have you. So can you share some of your story and the path that's brought you here? I would love to. So I love the healing arts and it was the journey that brought me to that place was the pain point. So although I love the healing, I have to be honest and authentic that I didn't come from a place that I was perfect. (laughs) So um, it really dawned on me when I had gone to school to be a massage therapist and I had seen all these people come into my practice and one at a time they would share their stories and their stories similar to mine was trauma abuse and things that would make me quiver and I started to realize oh my goodness I need to do some work on my own personal being in order to help others I need to heal myself because in the beginning I thought oh I just wanted to heal and help the world I didn't realize I was the wounded bird that needed the healing first. And so that began my journey on um, self-development, personal development, personal growth, everything I could get my hands on, every course I could go to, um, everything that felt appealing and authentic, I had my hands on it in my early 20s. And I have to say, I feel blessed because I started my journey young. So now as a late 40 person, (laughs) I feel so blessed that I have done the work and I continue to do the work. It's not that you arrive and you get there and then you're somewhere better than someone else, but I may be a step ahead of that person. So that's my, my story in a nutshell, but it all starts with that pain point. And as the pain continued, it allowed me to have the space to heal and share with others what I was doing to heal. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's one of the most important parts of, you know, helping others is going through that healing journey yourself, right? And it's never ending. It's never ending, but you get to a place where you're much more comfortable in who you are, and then you can just help people so much more. Right. And a lot of times I reflect on whatever it is that I'm going through. Um, Hence why I chose to be a life coach versus a therapist, because 
I taught through my own story and I continue to teach through my own stories. So my clients and students get a direct glimmer of what's going on in my life because I'm always showing them how I'm using the same tools that I teach them on my own personal life because it wouldn't be right if I would not walk my talk, right? (laughs) So that's the biggest thing for me. I'm very transparent. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's important too, to have that authenticity with your clients. You need to be transparent like that, not share every detail of your life, but share your path so that they, they know it works because it works for you. You're doing it. They can see how that can help them. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The session doesn't become mine. It just becomes a portion of what I do or what I've done with other clients. So they, cause story, as we, as you know, stories are what allows us to feel. So when we hear those stories, we feel as a part of that. That's why we grow and heal. So, so we know we're not alone. So true. So what then does healing with creativity mean to you? Well, it's so funny because years and years ago, I would have told you that I am the least creative person. I come from parents who, especially my father is super creative. He's artistic and so is my mom. And I can't draw a bird, like a (laughs) stick figure. So I was always shut down in that, that zone of like, oh, I'm not a good artist. I even thought I wanted to do design work. Um, and I would draw a stick figure and I would laugh at myself. So creativity came different for me and it has everything to do with what feels good. So like, I love creating, um, little posts for my social media. You know, people say to me, Elizabeth, why don't, why don't you farm that out? Like hire someone. I'm like, Oh, but this is my creativity. I get to put color in and feel it feels good. So it's a flow of life. It's a way of, to me, it's a way of movement. And so it's creating something new. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a really important point too, that creativity is in everything that we do. It's not just creating that masterpiece or writing that novel or, you know, playing in a rock band or whatever. Um, It's in everything we do. And so if it's the little things like the social media posts, or maybe it's the cooking or, you know, whatever you enjoy and putting your own flair on that, that's creativity. So absolutely. And, you know, I love that you're even saying like cooking, because again, I'm not, that's not something that I feel good at, but I love the creative of, I get to create something new, I make something, and then you see that you've done it. And it, it feels so good in the body, especially because I work with the, the chakra system. It feels so good when you create because it allows you to feel empowered. And that's mm-hmm. something that you can't buy. You know it. I mean, you can be told how awesome you are, but when you feel good about yourself and in, in whatever you've created, it's that's yours. You take ownership. Yeah, it's great. absolutely. Absolutely. So what inspires you in the work that you do? Uh, The transformations, the transformations that I hear from others, seeing that growth, seeing how people change their relationships with themselves and with others, um, just hearing their joy and their happiness. That's what gets me jumping out of bed every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to agree with that one. Seeing those aha moments in people when they, you know, get something or they figure something out or something clicks for them or they move into a really great place in their life. I just love that as well. I just, it's so important. It's what gets me up to 30 every morning so I can... I love that. And I love like when I, because I see the energies of people and it's, it's almost like it's a light switch that it just turns on and their whole coloring changes. And I get so excited. Like it lights me up at that instant moment. I'm like, yes, I get it. I see that they get it. And that is priceless. Absolutely. Absolutely. Best thing. So This is something that comes up often for creatives and healers about monetizing our work. So what are your thoughts as a healer on monetizing? 
Mm, I had a really big struggle with this, especially as I shared earlier that I was in private practice in my um, early 20s and I had money mindset issues from the get out. Let, you know, as soon as I stepped out of my, my parents' womb. <laughs> um, and I can remember that there was another massage therapist down the road and she said, oh, do you feel like that there's a conflict that we're so close? And I said, absolutely not. Because I knew my practice was at its, at this time was at its fullest. And I couldn't see anymore. But we also needed to know that there's more people out there who are rallying, who are working towards the same goal. And the same, say another therapist is not going to do what I do. Another life coach doesn't teach the same way I do. But if we're going towards the same goal as helping people, the transformation is so powerful and it needs to be said. But also that exchange of what I call a vibration as money, it mm -hmm. needs to be an exchange. And that's how we live in this world. We need money. So if you have a gift and it helps somebody do something or get someplace and live a better life, then yes, absolutely. There's an exchange there. And that is a healthy way of looking at it. And I will mm -hmm. say that that's what helped me become as successful as I can be and continue to be because I believe in the power of exchange. Yeah, I do. The power of that energy exchange. And, you know, in our society, money is what's needed, right? But it, whether it's an energy exchange of, of money or something else, there needs to be something that mm -hmm. for, for both sides to get what they need from it. Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So what is the creative healing modality that you use the most for yourself? Well, I start my day with movement every day. Mm -hmm. And after that, I go into meditation and I quiet and calm my mind. Because I know before we were talking about how much we love to talk. Um, <laughs> and, and it's important, especially for people who love to share and talk. We need to quiet down because then we don't get those intuitive taps and we might be missing something really, really large. So I love that meditation. Um, mm -hmm. I am always known to be holding crystals or sleeping next to crystals. Sometimes they make it into my bed and they're surrounding me. <laughs> um, and I, I think really connecting with source. I think for me, connecting to the higher source of wisdom God, angels, you name it. I call my posse. Um, that's, that's my daily practice. It's not sometimes, it's always. And that's how that helps me stay in alignment and engaged with my truth and being on this journey of helping others and being the best mom and wife that I can be. Yeah. And yeah, friends, absolutely. of course, <laughs> without, <laughs> without saying, right? Without saying. <laughs> And, you know, it's so, so important. I, I, I teach a, well, I facilitate a meditation and journaling program first thing in the morning every day. And it is amazing the difference that it makes, right, to, to start your day with something like that, a ritual um, meditation. You know, I was never a true believer. I would try it once in a while. Oh, yeah, calm that monkey mind. And, but once you sort of are able to sit for a few moments, and it can be sometimes just a few moments, um, whether it's guided or, or breathing or however you do that. I think it really makes a big difference in, in how your brain functions and bringing out that creativity and being able to go on and, and do things in your day. So I'm a huge proponent. I'm telling everybody, you know, try meditation, just give it a try. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have to say, I too was the same person where like, no, I don't know if this works. It's great for other people. I get it when I'm running, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I have a 77 year old man who has been coming to my meditation class for the last two years. And his life has transformed tremendously since he implemented that. And even the messages that he shares, because we have a circle and we share a lot, 
Um, he's the only man that comes consistently, which I'm so proud of him, but he shows up and he shows up to himself and you can see that it comes out and it is mm -hmm. so incredible. And it's because he meditates. It has nothing to do with anything else that he does right now. So mm -hmm. I am, you know, layering the thickness <laughs> of how important it is or the benefits of yeah. meditation. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Once you get it, you get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so keep practice. And that's, that's it. It's just a practice. Just keep yeah. practicing, keep practicing, keep practicing. And it's, so there's times where I can meditate with a dog jumping on me and a kid, you know, playing football around me. <laughs> and sometimes yes. you need to because yes. those things are happening. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what would you say you're the proudest of in your life? Uh, uh, my heart just feels like cracked open. Um, I am the proudest that I have, one, done the work for myself and fallen in love with who I am and who mm -hmm. I'm meant to be. But I have to layer that because the, once I've done that, I was able to then attract the most amazing husband. We're married almost 22 years. And because we have this amazing relationship, we manifested these two incredible children. One, my son from Russia, which we adopted. And the other that I had no, for, had complete fertility issues. And then holy moly, how does this happen at 41? But God gifted me that baby 10 years after I prayed and prayed for him. So I'm so proud of, again, starting with me, working on me and how the ripple effect has transformed who we are and what we've been able to accomplish and continue to accomplish. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing when you do that work and how the energy shifts within you and around you to manifest the things that, that you need or, or want or have a desire for, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. It's a ripple. I mean, it has so much to do with not just you, but everyone else who mm -hmm. has may not, you may not even realize how much it has a role in their lives. Just how yeah. you change. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's something that I say often, um, you know, you can't change others, but if you change, they have to change, right? Mm -hmm. So they might fall away and that's the change or they'll have to shift because you've shifted. And yeah, so it, it is a ripple for sure. Yeah, yeah. great yeah. stuff. So, so if you could change one aspect of our society through the work you do, what would that be? Hmm. Well, in the times that we're living these days, I can see how um, I think I would change how people approach themselves. And if they could t treat themselves more kindly, chances are they would treat the world a little bit more kindly and see the oneness. If they could just see the connection and the interconnectivity of their energy and how the world reacts to them, they may be just a little kinder to themselves and let go of that prickly pear that they're holding on to so they can approach the world with more love. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that you say that with everything that's the polarization of the world that we're in right now. And it's that pain that is causing this, right? And so I think if we can just add more love and kindness to that pain, you know, hopefully we can help with the healing. Ultimately, people have to heal themselves, but as a collective, we can help with that energy, right? So. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that that's the important thing is to see when people act out of anger and pain and frustration, that they are acting out of that pain point. So yeah. even as an abuse victim, having gone through that myself, I had to see that that person was acting out of the pain point that that person had been abused in that person's life. And then they were hurting someone else. And I happened to be that victim, but I had to see it the reverse. I had to see the love in that person and that he was created out of love and then pain took over. And when pain took over, that caused that 
reaction to hurt others. And so yeah. once I was able to see it the opposite, I could heal myself and then teach that to others that we're, many of us come from a place of pain. And if mm -hmm. we can find the solution to calm and heal our pain, we don't have to be so abrasive. We don't have to be so painful and pain ridden, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting as you go through that journey, um, the, the ebbs and flows of it, but ultimately, if you can stay with the love and, and kindness, the healing is there for yourself and for others. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So do you have an inspirational quote that you live by? So I love um, affirmations and I love to work with affirmations because they're just fun and they also become a part of, of who I am. So they change constantly. Um, but today's uh, affirmation is abundance flows into my life in miraculous ways every day. I like that. Mm hmm. So it's, it's about abundance and it's about whatever abundance means to me in that moment. But when mm -hmm. we look to the universe for their, the miracles of every day, we see them. Mm -hmm. Just like if we're looking for hurt people or people who are doing wrong things, we all see them. But maybe we just shift and pivot and look for the miraculous miracles that happen and the abundance of life. Yes. Yes. Where you put your energy is what you'll find. Absolutely. So shift yeah. into abundance of good things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Love it. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so is there anything else you'd like to add that we maybe haven't discussed today? Oh my goodness, lover. So what that's an open-ended <laughs> conversation. <laughs> There's so much about love and healing and being in, in a place of joy and happiness. And I think when we're not there, if we can't answer that I love myself more today than I did yesterday, then we need to just realign who we are and how we're approaching life, how we're thinking and how are we acting to others. And yeah. When we do that, we have way more control over how we see the world and how our day ends, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I want to thank you so much for being here. It was an absolute joy. Thank you. I love sharing like-minded conversations <laughs> with my woo-woo friends. This is good. Thank you for allowing me and offering this space. I appreciate it. And that you're teaching people so many different layers of healing. It's so powerful. Thank you. It is. And I think, thank you. I think the more we can come together and that's one of the things, you know, you talked about being afraid of, or not being afraid of the therapist down the street. And that's one of the reasons that I do these, um, collaborations like the interviews on my podcast and the summits that I do and things like that is because when we can come together and improve people's lives like I may not be the perfect fit for somebody but somebody else may be and if we can just all help heal each other mm -hmm. you know that I think is the most important part so I absolutely appreciate you and what you do too and you know we have a few other projects on the on the go together and I really do appreciate the energy that you bring. And so, yeah, thank you. It. And I think it's a time for us to come together as healers to shine light. And the mm -hmm. more light that I, the, when I hold my light and you hold your light and the more we can gather together, the, the bread of the world's going to be. So I too agree with your philosophy of bringing one another together so we can shed light and show others that there is a lot of good and there's a lot of people who are rallying and supporting and want to see people through that light. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you again for being here. Thank yeah. you. All right. To our listeners, we will see you again next week. And in the meantime, have amazingly creative days. Are you a daily journaler? Do you want more creativity in your day? We have two great creativity journals to start your day with. One for people who already have a journaling practice and one for people who are new to journaling. Both are an amazing way to start your day. Both make the perfect gift for a person in your life. 
check out Have an Amazingly Creative Day and How Do I Have an Amazingly Creative Day, both currently available on Amazon. Click the link below to purchase yours now.